Okay, yep, so hello, I'm Matt, uh, otherwise known as Gasman, if you uh, sort of, uh, have sort of spend any time on the sort of, uh, GitHub or uh, Stack Overflow. And right now I'm doing a lot of work rewriting choosers. And the aim of this work is firstly to bring together all of the chooser implementations in Wagtail, the page chooser, the image chooser, document chooser, snippet chooser, into a single implementation rather than copied and pasted code sort of all over the place. And secondly, to make that one unified implementation available for easily building choosers of your own for arbitrary models without having to do that copying and pasting of huge chunks of Wagtail code. So that might be things like video choosers for a package like Wagtail Media, or if you're doing an e-commerce e integration with something like Oscar, a product chooser. And I've picked this out as a topic because I think it captures a the nature of a lot of the work I do on, on Wagtail, getting stuck into the low level code changes and refactoring while also hopefully having an impact on the big picture strategic direction of Wagtail as a product, um, as a project. So you might think, what, what is the big deal here? How complicated can choosers really be? Quite complicated as it turns out. Uh, so I'll give a warning here, this talk is full of annoying details you don't care about. Or more exactly, it's full of annoying details that you shouldn't have to care about as a Wagtail site developer. During the sprints this week, uh, Storm was doing some work around choosers and he said to me, oh, I thought of choosers as this fairly simple, boring part of Wagtail, but there's a lot going on there, is it, isn't there? And, and that's uh, very true. If we uh, to look at a very simple case of the chooser pattern, we'll go for the, this uh, person snippet here. And when we load this page, uh, we have a representation of the person object. Uh, we click a button to open that, this list of choices, choose one, and then that replaces the item that was there before. And if you're limiting things to that particular journey, then yes, it's pretty simple. Um, there's uh, various packages out there like uh, Wagtail Model Chooser that copy and paste these bits of Wagtail code to replicate that pattern. And of course, copying and pasting bits of internal Wagtail code like that always end up being a bit of a moving target and breaking in later Wagtail releases after we've changed them. But these packages fulfill a need. Um, but even this simple case becomes complex when we look at a little deeper because there are actually two different components at play here. There's the chooser widget, the thing that appears as part of the form, and the, uh, the chooser modal views. Uh, we have to make that distinction because uh, you can have one without the other. If you're launching the, the, if this from the rich text editor, you're using the chooser modal to cho pick an image, but you're not doing that from the chooser widget. It's, it's a whole different widget that's, uh, that's dealing with this. And so on my first attempt at creating this single unified code base for the chooser pattern, which was the uh, Wagtail generic chooser package, this documentation starts out by saying, okay, there are two different components that you need to know about here. There's the, the widget and the chooser. Uh, so already we have this internal complexity leaking out into the end user world. It's like, if you want to use this package, here's the first thing you need to know. And I really think we should be able to do a, a lot better than that. Uh, think of it like a swan, kind of graceful above the surface, even if the down below it's paddling like mad to do its thing. So, so yeah, let's dig a bit deeper again. So we, we open up this modal window, hand over control to it, and at some point in the future, we'll get a result back from it that we can then put into the, the chooser widget. But while this window is open, there's a lot that can happen here. We've got uh, the filtering and searching that will display new, uh, a new set of results. There's pagination. Uh, we can switch over to this tab and upload a new image. And uh, in, in the case of, uh, yeah, well, well this, this form, it can fail validation and have to reshow just that form while keeping the rest of the modal intact. And as of Wagtail 3, if you do successfully upload an image, then it might recognize that that's a duplicate and present you with a whole other confirmation step. So there's a, a lot of stuff that has to go on here while the, uh, wh while and just in this window without leaving the, the original form that you are on. 
all of these things uh, in, involve a back and forth request to the server, and we have a component within Wagtail to manage that called modal workflow. Um, so um, if we were to, to go through some of those interactions with the developer tools open, uh, you'd see uh, some uh, sort of responses, JSON responses like this. Um, this so it's, it's, so it's running all of these uh, requests in the background so that we're never leaving the page. And you'll see that there is this step item in this JSON which sort of identifies kind of where in that sort of flow chart we are. Uh, whether so in this case, this is step chooser, so this is just rendering the initial chooser view. And each of these steps has a corresponding sort of chunk of JavaScript in this uh, sort of dictionary here um, to say how we should sort of handle this particular step. And it's a big old chunk of code. Um, right now, every one of these, every kind of chooser in, in Wagtail has one of these dictionaries. It has to because they have all of these slightly different feature sets. And that's bad news for our goal of opening up this framework to allow people to create their own choosers. Because we don't really want to say, OK, you want to build a chooser? Sure, just supply your own 100-line chunk of JavaScript. As I say, we can do better than that. And the uh, solution that I uh, came up with uh, was um, the delightfully named Chooser Modal Onload Handler Factory. And believe me, when I came up with that name, I had this crisis. Am, am I turning Wagtail into some enterprise Java application? But th this, yeah, as complicated as this is, this is the, the swamp paddling under the surface to make everything look graceful. And to put it simply, this is an object that creates that big old dictionary of JavaScript handlers. So this is the, the new code for the document chooser, which is very close to a, a plain vanilla chooser with no extra behavior. The only one bit of kind of special quirk it has is a fairly ob obscure bit of usability, to, uh, which is uh, if you go to a collection that has no items in it and you get this link, why not upload one now, then that, uh, that, that will uh, display the, the chooser form with that collection pre-filled, the, the, the upload form with, with that yeah, pre-filled. So we've just got this one function that sets that up. Um, so, we, we've, so now we, we've gone down from sort of, sort of hundreds of lines of code to just this, this one special case. And if you, if you have a chooser that does everything in the totally conventional way, you don't need to customize this, this at all. So there's no new JavaScript to write. And at that point, this is just an internal detail that you'll probably never need to worry about uh, ever again after this talk. So another thing that has really helped to, to cut down the amount of boilerplate code in these choosers is the concept of view sets, which is something that we came up with uh, a few years back. I think it's uh, Carl sort of did the in initial implementation for the simple CRUD views like the uh, sites, the admin area. Um, we happily embrace Django's class-based views for this sort of thing so that we don't have to sort of write this uh, sort of very, very sort of standard co code to say, here is, a, here is a site model, here is a form class, just give me an edit view that will deal with uh, editing it. And that's, that's great. And uh, so you've got sort of the edit view, the create view, the delete view, the index view, and, it, and Django supplies all of those. But it leaves you writing a lot of definitions to connect these up. Because here's the, the edit view. Um, you've got this, so when you submit it, it redirects back to the index view. It also has this button linking to the delete view. And each of those cross links is another line of code to tell it where to find those other views. And uh, it's actually a lot more effective to, d to define this group of views all in one go, so you don't need to write all that spaghetti to connect them up. And at its simplest, this is what that, can, that code can look like. So this is just, yeah, give me a view set that manages a person and has these form fields. So just this one bit of code will give you uh, an interface like this. So it's uh, something that's kind of really useful to have as, as a pattern in Wagtail. And going back to the chooser modal views, it struck me that this is a very similar situation, a bunch of interlinked views with uh, sort of shared configuration that you don't want to have to repeat for each view. So to cut to the chase, this is now what a chooser definition looks like at its absolute simplest. Well, in fact, the, the absolute simplest would be if you just had model equals person 
and ignored all of the other stuff, then you'll get sort of uh, the, the standard snippet icon and uh, and yes, and quite generic labels. But um, but yeah, so, so we, we've got the end-to-end -end chooser just with a couple of lines of code. And as we've seen, choosers can get a lot more complicated than this with custom functionality and all sorts of edge cases. But handling those should, when I'm done with this uh, bit of development, just be a case of overriding methods on this one class. So ultimately, we'll be able to define the image chooser and the document chooser, all of these different choosers, just as a sort of variance of this. Um, and yeah, so this is how our resulting person chooser looks. And that, uh, that tiny definition that we just saw is actually doing a really wide range of things across Wagtail. I mentioned earlier that we distinguish between the chooser widget and the chooser modal. And uh, well, unlike the old Wagtail generic chooser package, this handles both of them in one go. Um, because that, that separation is a detail that you probably don't care about. You just want to say, give me a chooser. I know what a chooser is supposed to behave like in Wagtail. Just give me that. And you don't have to dig into all of these internals. And those of you who've tried out Wagtail 3 will know that we no longer have to say, use snippet chooser panel, image chooser panel, and so on. We, we can just use a plain field panel because Wagtail now has built-in logic to say, OK, this field is a foreign key to image. I know what to do with this. I've got a widget type to handle that. And this new fra uh, chooser framework participates in this logic. So once you've registered this chooser view set with just those, that couple of lines of code, this widget will just get used automatically. So just, um, yeah, just use, use a field panel and it will know to use this, uh, this widget that you've just defined. Uh, we haven't sort of talked about that edit this person button uh, yet. So when you think about it, there's a lot of possible places that that could point to depending on whether that model is a snippet or something using model admin or something like images with its own dedicated area in Wagtail. And knowing where to link to is actually a, a, a problem that, that we've had to solve before uh, for the, uh, the site history report that we introduced in 2.14, sometime around there, uh, where you want to be able to show these are the sort of objects that have been changed recently, and you need to, if, if people have edited a person snippet, you need to be able to link there. So we've got, already got this system where when you set up one of these uh, CRUD views, it will, uh, yeah, you can declare, I am the edit view for this particular model. And um, it's, uh, so th this is all, uh, all stuff that we can t take advantage of here. And I find this sort of thing really exciting. Wagtail is, it's a pretty mature product now. We've found these user interface patterns that work well, and, and uh, we're now in this process of, uh, opening up Wagtail as a framework so that in your own code, you can take advantage of those patterns in your own code. And so far, it's been a bit of a slog, a bit of a slow process of uh, taking these sort of recurring patterns and say, okay, how can we extract that as a reusable building block? Um, I haven't even talked about the, the table component that we use for the listing things inside the chooser. Um, so that you can, if you want, sort of several columns in that, in, in the chooser, then that's an, another thing that you can just do with another line of definition. Um, but yeah, as, as I'm building this, I'm constantly finding that I can join it up to some other part of the framework that I worked on opening up a couple of months ago. And it feels like things are really starting to snowball. This, this effort of opening things up is really, really paying off. And we're starting to sort of, yeah, be able to just build all of these things that behave in the understood Wagtail way uh, and just by plugging bits of code together and not having to just copy and paste huge chunks of code. And I think that's a really exciting direction for, uh, for Wagtail in the, the coming months and years. So yeah, really excited by that. Thank you very much. <laughs>